Um, Mina, as another Italian fan, after watching her team and your team today draw after taking the lead again, is a little bit down. Uh, is yeah. there any crumbs of comfort you'd like to give her from abroad, or are you as down as she is? She's even more pessimistic than I am. I am totally pessimistic, Mina, and uh, I must say that I was totally expecting uh, this uh, draw with Croatia. I, I drop you this fantastic statistic. Amongst the uh, middle and big uh, the countries, uh, Italy has bad record, a negative record, just against Uruguay, Brazil, and yes, Croatia. So imagine, I was totally expecting that. And when in the second half, Italy just sat back and said, okay, maybe it's going to be one year. Guys, what are you doing? It's one year. It's just one goal. Just try for the second. But I mean, it's, you know, it's playing uh, Spain and Croatia in four days. I am teasing. And Italy doesn't have such a deep squad. So. Cha uh, sorry, Tancredi. Speak Italian if you want. So, uh, oh God, Tancredi. <laughs> Can I just ask you one question? Looks like you have lipstick on. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 why do you have red lips? And what have you been doing, Amore? <laughs> Well, Amore, uh, still, still nothing, but you will see tonight, and you won't see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, want to, I want to ask you about Balotelli, because we had a slight you disagreement. You think, think it's lipstick, but guys, this is the effect of this. Okay, oh, let's go. Um, but tell me about Balotelli. Do you think he, he's worth his place in the team? Well, absolutely. Actually, there are a lot of criticism now, because uh, Balotelli was uh, replaced in the last 30 minutes, the last 25 minutes, when actually probably he was... Uh, uh, Castano that was running out of energy and you know against uh, a, such a uh, I mean a physical uh, team like Croatia uh, probably uh, a forward a centre forward like Balotelli even if it is not the typical centre forward anyway is needed uh, honestly tonight I think that uh, he played uh, quite good uh, he was uh, helpful uh, for all the team he had very good chances uh, and I say that Pleticosa did a couple of great saves. Uh, Italy probably was not even that, mm, that lucky uh, tonight. But at the same time, the second half, they should just search for the second goal because um, Croatia is just uh, such a solid team. And with the uh, qualities with Modric and uh, Mandzukic that we saw, that, I mean, uh, something could happen sooner or later. And that, uh, Thank you. I think you're giving them a little bit too much credit because if, if Italy had been better with their, clin with their finishing, if they had been a bit more clinical, I think that we could have scored four or five goals in the first half. <laughs> I genuinely believe that. <laughs> do you know how many chances were created? Yeah, you're laughing at me. However, the second half, they did lose pace. But what do you see as their chances now for qualifying out the group? Well, um, now it's tough. You know, since the final whistle blew it, Everyone, and I mean everyone, in Italy, every newspaper, every journalist on Twitter, every pundit is speaking about the so-called, the unfamous biscuit. That is what eliminated eight years ago Italy in a Euro Championship. What is a biscuit when there is one only result that could uh, kick, out, kick you out from the competition? And that result is happening. Eight years ago that happened with Denmark and Sweden. They just needed a 2-2, and the 2-2 happened in the second last minute. And well, uh, a 2 all or a 3 all would be the result that would qualify against Spain and Croatia. And everybody is talking about that. Now, <laughs> some few are saying, oh, but Spanish, they are, uh, do, do you think that they would just give out their, their fame because of that? I don't want to think anything. I, I remember that eight years ago, everybody was saying, oh, but Scandinavian are so civil. So, hold on, let me get this right. There is a conspiracy theory that mm. says that if, the, if Croatia and Spain, when they play each other, have a high score draw, nothing that Italy can do will allow them to qualify. Is that well, correct? Well, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's actually statistic. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, statistically, if Italy wins even 10 nil with Ireland, but if Spain and Croatia, if the result now, if the game will finish in this way, statistically... If it finished to two or two all or three all, Spain and Croatia are through. Okay. Yeah. So two two basically. So we'll, uh, we'll get Chris to have a look at the odds for a, 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 a high scoring draw between those two and whether the bookmakers I have, have worked it out. In, in company, I can tell you, with whom I spoke uh, 15 minutes ago, he already told me that the odds on the two all are already crashing. 
Really, that's interesting. Very well, interesting. Well, then it goes to show you, you know, we talk about Italian corruption, but it's not only restricted to Italy, yeah. is it? <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. We'll see well, whether it happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get a bet on seven all and see what kind of odds <laughs> I'll get. Thank you, Edici. Thank you for talking to us. Ciao, morning. It's a pleasure. I will go out tonight. Bye, guys. Try Bye. not get your lips too red. <laughs>